Yeah. Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant Team Ban. Dire Team Pick. Ten seconds remaining. Gyrocopter! Radiant team pick. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ESL1 New York Qualifiers. Game 1 between Team Empire and Five Youngs, with me, Drag and Drop, as your main cast of oh, this Game 1, at least, as Capitalist is still remaining. busy with the Navi versus New Team 3 game, as, Five of course, there remaining. have been some delays in that. So I'm taking over, at least for this Radiant Game 1, and after that, you'll have your trusty cap Radiant back from dead. So I'm joined by Gorgon, the Wonder Cow. On stats here, he's still at the office and couldn't join me uh, on mic, unfortunately. So it'll be mostly solo cast sprinkled in, of course, with the juicy, juicy bits of information from them on the little bit, uh, little stat box there on the right. And I uh, hope the setup is all right. I haven't had too much time to prepare. It was a really short notice cast, but yeah, we'll try to do our best. If there's anything to worry about, please write it in chat and <laughs> and hope that I'll pick it up. But yeah, let's talk about these teams. Let's talk about the games, of course. Empire uh, with Low Dance, Yolo Warrior. Who did that actually? I was <laughs> silent. And two standards here, General. Uh, Counter playing Teamless. He had a, uh, had a Team Dota All Stars. Really short lived team, though. Um, yeah, they played in the International 25 Open Qualifiers, I think. Uh, at least that's the input I got from Gorgon here, so. He is now teamless, but the apathy might know him. Uh, at least I remember him, or I remember seeing him every once in a while. He's, um, yeah, he, he is. It's actually a carry for Aspera, so an active member of the Dota 2 and European scene, to speak. Film films, of course, uh, new team, Kuro, Kuro's team here, the German stack, more or less. Beta, Jarex, Mind Control, Matuma Man. Yeah. I think this should be one of their first, if not their first, official match that they're actually playing right now. So I'm honored to be able to cast them. And really looking forward to what they can bring to the table, of course. Uh, this team bustling with talent. Team Empire, though, no slouches either. So we should be in for a good one here. But yeah, let's actually take a look at the draft as it's already halfway through here. Bounty Hunter and Lina banned out by Fimf Jungs and the Earthshaker and Le Shrek banned out by Team remaining. Empire. So we're fairly standard bans. Nothing too much to, uh, too, much to too much to analyze here. Same for the picks here. Yeah, Jarcopter Clockwork, very strong heroes. Jarcopter, especially up against the Phantom Lancer, uh, is one of the heroes that can match up well in later parts of the game if you have some crowd control to go along with it. Just, just make sure that you keep the, all the Phantom Lancer illusions uh, in place for a second there, so that the flak can, can go to work, so you can find out who the real one is and bring them down with extra lockdown. So far, they only have the clockwork, which is Dire team ban. necessarily great against the Phantom Lands per se, but of course, uh, it, it's nice to have that kind of initiation. Just to make sure that you, once you hit your level 6, once you hit your level 7, you can start roaming around, open up the map, 
Make sure it'll put on pressure wherever so that you can get ahead of the Phantom Lancer because it's kind of the more reliable way of dealing with them. Five Just make sure that you remaining. snowball before the PL can really get his items that he become that bane, Reserve that's time. unstoppable force, really, that he can sometimes be in games. And Jarkop, of course, lends himself to that kind of game plan as well, being able to dish out a lot of magic damage early on. Uh, between the call down or the rocket barrage, of course, he, they can benefit from that. Radiant Winter Wyvern, though, down. it's gonna be a nice little counter, but once again, in the later parts of the game, to, to all that physical damage coming out from Gyrocopter. I mean, just the cold embrace. Only works on one target, though, so the Gyrocopter can still be effective with the flak cannon, but in some situations, that Ten cold embrace, of course, remaining. can help you get out of sticky situation, can turn a teamfight around. Five seconds remaining. So, Wyvern, in general, though, not the only thing it does, of course. I mean, Splint Blast, a great new, great Reserve for pushing time. out the lanes, slowing people down. Uh, on Early on in the laning phase, Arctic Burn, actually a very nice spell to just harass out enemy off laners like a Clockwork. If the Clockwork's solo, then he has to watch out not to get burned too much. Of course, it's a very long cooldown, so Clockwork, of course, being on the high side, being able to creep block Radiant with the Cox on that off lane, he, he should be able to get his levels. Do much no matter what. But he has to be careful about uh, moving Dire out too far forward hit. because with the slows of the Winter Wyvern and the Phantom Lancer, with nuke damage here to, as well from the from the Spirit Lance, um, could net them a kill sooner rather than later if the clock works out of position. Yeah, more picks coming out. Storm's right here on 14 pick. Empire. So, of course, a hero that they run very, very well. In. Yeah, not much else to say. It's very mobile here. Great against Clockwork here. It's Clockwork not really great against the Stormspin in terms of just locking him down. It'll just about same for Gyrocopter. I mean, normally the way Gyrocopter turns around in team fights is just drop down the call down and then Dire go to town. But Stormspin, if he still has enough mana left, he can just survive that no problem. And now with the Tusk as well, yeah, that snowball lasts long enough for both of the call down rockets to go out. I think, but ah. Uh, uh, it, it should be, yeah, but you're, the point is you're able to dodge the call down with the snowball if you so choose uh, and then re-engage yourself with that big teamfight ultimate in the early stages remaining. of the game down the drain, really, with no effect whatsoever. So a lot of play potential here, There's a lot of aggressive potential from Team Empire here between Storm and the Tusk. Reserve Looking to time. create space for the Phantom Lands. There are also ban out heroes that'll stop them from doing that. Um... They ban out the Razor. Uh, I, I think the link goes through Radiant the Doppelganger, if I'm not mistaken. So it would be a great way to keep tra keep tabs on a real Phantom Lancer. And of course, taking away his damage and kind of not doing a whole lot, at least for uh, stages of the game. Razor, of course, being the anti-carry that he is. Silence are also Ten banned out from Team remaining. Empire. It's a hero that they love to run themselves. But in this game, I mean, up again, if you have a Storm Sword on your team, if you have a Tusk on your team, you just can't afford a silencer because at some point, uh, time. Yeah, because you know how the game's going to go. Stormsir is going to initiate silencer if you don't bring him down immediately. Dire he's just going to pop his ultimate, and then all of a all of a sudden you're stuck behind enemy lines. So that's not what they want to have happen. Bimfjongso bringing out the Dragon Knight. That's uh, as uh, four played that in game one. Last night, uh, I watched part of that. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, that's a hero that we haven't seen too much of in the last couple of weeks, but it's a hero that is time. very strong anchor hero in a team fight. He's, he gets very tanky. It's really hard to bring him down just because of his dragon blood passive. Uh, at least when it comes to physical damage, and that's Radiant mostly what Team hit. Empire has right now. I mean, Storm, of course, uh, with the magical damage, but apart from that, not a whole lot of. Not a whole lot of magic burst damage. I mean, Storm's Word is... Because of what magic damage is, it's like a number of small instances of burst, right? It's not that big burst like a like a Lina Laguna Blade or even the Lion Thing of Death can be, so... Ten seconds remaining. Dragon Knight should be able to just stay in the front of the team fights, pop his remaining. ultimate, siege down the towers, and force Team Empire's hand, and then the Clockwork comes in to... Uh, Counter initiate, the line comes in with the follow up stuns, Gyrocopter, of course. Big AoE teamfight potential. Visage, last ban for Team Empire, and the bans for Fimf Young's actually Dux here. So as to not to give the Gyrocopter a hard time in the offlane. Um, Queen of Pain also. 
a favorable matchup for the Queen of Pain here up against the Storm Spirit. So, yeah, they were, looks like they Dire might have been expecting pick. maybe a Storm offlane or Queen of Pain offlane, something like that, something aggressive that can boost uh, bolster their potential in mid game. And last band techies, okay, yeah, with the task picked up is always something that you have to keep in mind. The potential of the techies coming out and. You just don't want to play against that if you can. And of course, Kuroki. He knows his techies, man. He knows his techies, so he definitely knows Ten seconds remaining. Uh, what possibilities exist with that hero. Five seconds remaining. Rubik, last pickup for Team Empire, so that'll be the secondary support. Nothing wrong with that, of course. Reserve time. Very solid hero. Um, the great little lockdown here with the telekinesis and the fate bolts and nice little nuke. And then later on the spells. There's plenty of good spells to seal actually. Pretty much Ten anything from the gyrocopter. Not made from flat cannon, but um five clock you can get your hands on a hook shot or the cogs. Get the... Physical damage in the later parts of the game. And um, of course, if you manage to get your hands on an Aghanim Scepter, you'll be able to rip through these Phantom Alliance illusions pretty damn quickly. If you manage to channel, uh, get a full channel off of the ultimate. Of, of course, that uh, only really works if you have these bounces. Like you have the Winter Wyvern there at the ready to be able to to cool and embrace a single target. Then the Witch Doctor, of course, pretty ineffective with that ultimate of his unless he's able to change targets. On that one. Right, so waiting for everyone to pick their heroes. Ten seconds that. remaining. And we should be heading into the game. There we are. Once again, if you're just tuning in, welcome. My name is Dragon Drop, bringing you this game one Prepare between Empire and battle. five Jungs, five Jungs, German stack here around Kuro. Not entirely German, of course, but it was rumored to be a fully German stack before, but of course, that was never more than just a rumor. I have a lot of FPS lag here. I hope that's maybe try and yeah I can maybe try and fix that by closing down some stuff but yeah if not we're just going to have to deal with it but yeah once again if you're just tuning in it's the ESL1 York qualifiers I'm joined by the one account on stats and after this game capitalist will take over of course in Itama they're still busy with the Navi game Team 1, 2, 3, so I'm hopping in battle. here on short notice. Doesn't look like any early aggression is going to come out from either team, so let's take a quick look at the lineups. Empire Yolo Warrior here on the Tusk in the offlane. We've got the Apathy on the Winter Wyvern General standing in here on the Storm Spirit. We've got Silent on the one position Phantom Lancer, and that leaves Aloha Dance playing the Grand Damagus. The other side of the river, we've got Fimf Jungs with Jarax playing the Lion. We've got Matumma Man the on one position Gyrocopter, Feta, that mid Dragon Knight, one of his signature heroes, Kuro, on that Witch Doctor. At least Mind Control playing the Clockwork in the offlane. No crazy lanes coming out. Might see Winter Warren actually move top to try and help out the Tusk a little bit. That's in. Yeah, Rubik should be all right up against the uh, up against the Clockwork. Just be able to uh, rasp out a little bit, and just apart from that, just concede the fact that Clockwork is going to get something in this offlane. So the one way to trade with that is either to just go full aggro with the Winter Wyvern down there and harass him, harass him out even further, or just try to put on some pressure on your own offlane. And <laughs> yeah, Tusk is actually trying to do a similar thing here, but he only got one of these melee creeps. But yeah, that still means that this creep wave will be making its way down. Okay. General mid here up against Fader, and of course Dragon Knight, not the not the mid here to go for if you want to win your lane. Okay, Empire actually not putting that much emphasis on us compared to other teams, so nice little bit of information. Yeah, we'll see whether it works out in this game. They definitely have a lot to dodge with the snowball. They have that aggressive potential, of course, just because they have the storm spirit. Once he gets rolling, um, with the help of the tusk, they should be able to get some easy pickoffs on these squishy supports, like Witch Doctor, like the Lion. Okay. Just trying to check whether everything is alright on stream. 
looks like we should be good. Yep. Um, back to my point in the middle lane. Uh, of course, don't pick a Dragonite to win the lane necessarily. Uh, Storm Spirit being arranged here, having much easier harassment, of course. He will be able to win his lane quite handily and get his farm. Beta is not really going to be able to do much about that, but what he will be able to do is get at least some CS. He's going to get his levels because he's tanky. Of course, uh, refire with a couple of. Uh, secures him a couple of last hits here and there at least. And Dragonite is not the kind of hero that you win mid with. He's the kind of hero that uh, you, you put mid, you get your levels, and then once the Storm Spirit rotates out, you take the tower with your ultimate. It's a little bit more passive when it comes to rotations. It, it doesn't really bother him that he's behind in that sense. Especially with Rune Control going his way, he'll be able to sustain himself quite handily. Spam out the free fire, and if he catches Storm Sword in that, then he'll need to rely more than he would maybe want to on a static remnant to actually get the last hits. Base damage reduction, but of course he has plenty of right click attacks. Take a quick look at the off lanes here. We've got the Tusk uh, not really having the best time. Bracking level 2 just, yeah. Of course, obviously up against the Strine lane. Uh, especially this Witch Doctor here. Gotta be careful about the cast. I mean, if it bounces the range creep and back, then you'll be you'll be taking a lot of harassment here with 60 base damage on that support. And we even have the line stacking and pulling through, so they'll deny a lot of much needed experience for the task. Meanwhile, mind control in the bottom lane here. He's already level 2, working level 3. An extra creep wave down here on this town. He should be able to reach that now. And only silent here in the lower dance. He's doing his part in the jungle, of course, as well. Very passive early stage, and not a whole lot else that you could expect, really, because all of these heroes, they need their levels to actually start doing anything useful. Tusk, of course, wants to have level 2 at least, uh, to be able to snowball eye shots properly. Maybe plus 1, plus 2 to get a kill, but... Him being denied that is probably the... The single most, uh, the single most important reason. There's not any, any aggression coming out from Team Empire for now. Five youngs, of course, they should be fine. Just, you know, just farming up here, just making sure that the supports get their level sixes, especially the line here for a big, big burst. Make sure that Fate's uh, not being ganged up in his middle lane. So have a TP ready. That kind of standard stuff. Yeah, Clockwork's getting his levels, so uh, everything's really going fine. Comes to five youngs, but of course, thing goes for Empire Zaya's Silent. He's falling. Curious to see what build he goes for. I mean, this couple of Phantom Lancer builds possible. Actually, top lane warrior might be in trouble. Five, bro. All alone here, though. It's not not the easiest setup done here, or not the longest setup done with just a single cast without bounces. So, wouldn't have gotten them enough time to get Jerex in for the kill. Got to try and get the kill. Meanwhile, mid. Oh, oh Feta. Drop down to the bottom here. Gets a nice little brief fire off, but that might actually be enough to keep him safe with the teleports command. Nice double stun from Jerex here. Can it turn us around? Doesn't look like it. It looked him for it, though. The FC now hacks up. Feta with the follow up stun. Kuro is here as well with the cast bounce, and that's the first blood. And yeah, that's what I was talking about here. The rotation from the supports. As they went on Feta here. Yeah, just the strength of brief fire and the damage reduction here. Yeah, 25% as I was level 2 when that started. And on all three heroes, they just didn't have the power. Break through the extra armor from the Dragon Blood as well. Then, really nice stun from the high ground. Yeah, with the commitment there as well from both supports. I mean, they, they didn't need to be up top here. Musk was forced out before that, so he, he now has level 2, but look at the clockwork. He's living at level 5. And he's even leaving more, so Empire, not putting emphasis on that, that might uh, might actually bite them in the ass at some point once the Clockwork starts hooking around, setting up for Fata to come in, setting up for the balls to get the follow-up stunts. I mean, one thing, if you have Empire running into you and then be able to kind of initiate like that, it's another, uh, another thing entirely to initiate yourself. Uh, I, was, I was contemplating Silent Iron build here, it looks like, yeah, so far so standard here with the Aquila. Um, might be looking into treads or drums, any sort of stat item to tide him over. 
but uh, I've also seen Phantom Lancers even going for, go for Yash. And yeah, Yash are boots of travel, kind of build, or if you want to go straight for the feudal plane. Um, this game I wouldn't hate either, really, if they want to start fighting, then they should be going for the quick defuse plane. With the task being as far behind as it is, I'm not quite sure that's actually the best way to go. Because you had a point with an helicopter, with two men, he's level 6 himself, he has a TV control too, and that's the kind of hero that can turn a fight around on a whim, just by being able to tilt the pot in, drop the call down. Uh, level 1, yeah, level 1 Dragon Tail, longest reliable hard stun in the game, absolutely. Paying dividends there, it's only level 1, it goes up to 3.25 seconds. At max level, and now, Tumba and Jarax is smoked up in the apathy. Almost running into him, but looks like they want to go for general here. There's the initial stun. Colon comes out, the hex fallout. That's an easy pick up on the storm. So then they even complete the teleport here. Two stun, uh, double stun from Jerax and the apathy. Got a wrong end of the brief fire. The snowball will dodge a little bit of damage, but of course, it's not an escape tool like that. Make it a triple. Oh, uh, actually, what? The general? He survived? Wow, okay. All things before they happen there, but yeah, he was dead to right. It was like at like five health points or so, not much more. Barely able to zip out in time. I mean, level one hex online, 2.5 seconds as well. Much more stronger than uh, the hex from like the Shadow Shaman, which is half Radiance that. Middle tower is under not attack. quite enough to actually finish him off. But yeah, they, they got two constellation kills there, so. We shouldn't be too, too sad about that. Not to mention tower and damage that they've been able to put out. I mean, just a couple of right clicks here from the Dragonite and Zoltwood bomb is enough to just drop down a tower. Uh, I, th I think one right click is 120 damage over time. Not entirely sure on the map again. It's been so long since I've actually thought about that, but it is quite sizable. And next time he uh, Feta has his dragon form, that tower should fall. In fact, five youngs, they want to make it that make their advantage count here. They have their level sixes and they want to use them when with the call down up and ready again. Mind control with the hook shot, so they're looking for silence here. I also have double ganger available though. It's not the easiest kill, but there's the hook shot follow-up, there's the hex. Follow up disables here, stun, and that's a dead. Dead dead Phantom Lancer. Nice little change they were there with the hook shot, then the cox pushback. Towards the line, providing you with attacks into the stun. Not a whole lot that you can do at Phantom Radiance Lancer there, unless you see it coming and all we have double ganger out. Yeah, from Fjungs, complete control of this game. It's not like they just get get support pickoffs here and there. They just got the carry here, they've been putting on pressure on the Storm Squirt here. Sure they didn't kill him, but it was my lane a while. Now, bottom tower she's seeing some attack. of these creeps here, it looks like it's... I can be happy about that, it was the one big... Big jump start, the kick start here for a Storm Twitter. At least it was supposed to be the plan. Storm Spirit can sort of work like... Um, like a Shadow Fiend in that regard. Hang on, top lane, Yolo Warrior. He's gonna be stunned up and... Uh, follow up cast bounces, not there, gets a snowball off, but he should still be dead here. Snowball to a creep though, but it's not gonna be enough. Yeah, caught out with rotation here. Feta opting to help out top before actually finishing the push down the middle. And yeah, that teleport will complete, but it's only a low dance here. He has to be careful not to get too close, or else that ranged dragon tail would have gotten him there too. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Meanwhile, mid. Oh, Matuma man, actually falling very low. He will fall to general here. Hookshot, barely off the mark, but there is a haste rune on the clockwork. Not a whole lot of mana left in stalls, but. But, mind control. Chance that went for the max rocket build, so not having that rock push. Snowball up top, and Jerex with the stun. That was stun from the snowball and the big burst from the fate ball. 10 damage on a squishy lion. Radiance middle tower is under yeah. attack. That leaves a mark in yeah, Empire starting to fight attack. back, looking at the fight recap, of course. A little bit in their favor as the game is paused, so... Is it a chance to take, take a look at the net worth and... That engagement up top, or with that engagement in mid, I should say. Uh, General able to pick up that kill for himself, get himself up to level 9 and back to the top of the net worth chart. Beta, right behind him though. Starting to get his tanky items up and running, has a power treads, value bracer. I don't know that he wants to turn this into drums. Um 
So here's the decision for that your Dragon Knight has to make at this point, whether you go for the Shadow Blade or straight into a BKB and this game I would almost say BKB unless you're really looking for more initiation because you already have the clockwork, you already have the potential to just siege down towers with the Dragon Knight, so you don't necessarily have um, have to have that Shadow Blades kind of scouting slash initiation potential. So I'd actually much rather like to see the BKB here, just be able to continue continue to snowball, just keep the Dragon Knight in front. Have the BKB at the ready if they go on you and then turn turn to fight. If they don't fight you, well, just take the towers, right? That's that's what a Dragon Knight does. Okay. Uh, let's take a quick look at this here as we have still have some time. Okay, Empire just confirmed. They're ready to go again, but yeah, let's take a look at items anyway. Winter Wyvern, of course, Radiant's on that support position. Not doing too much. It's a speed, Dyer's magic, magic stick kill. He's attack. just getting his level 6 up on his top lane. Goro already has his level 7, but at Urn of Shadows with the double... Uh, well, double gauntlets. Uh, Tusk, of course, in that off lane. Not the best start, but he's actually managed to hit his level 6 now. They get the tower denied, so that fell a little bit too low to the creep haven. Not something that you usually see up against a Dragonite. Usually, uh, you pick a Dragonite to be able to claim these towers for your own. It's of course tier ones, not really giving too much gold. The so denies, of course, don't hurt as much. But still, whatever, what whatever counts, right? Now smoke up in mid. They're looking for the Dragonite. There's a snowball on top of him. And yeah, they're looking to burst him down, should be able to on the stun, it's more than that. But now the turn around actually, they don't actually have enough burst to bring him down completely. Now, a lot of teleports, there's a hookshot, auto alone, and it's blown up by the finger of death and silent. Yeah, he needs a doppelganger up, and about, yeah, the rocket's actually skilled up by Matum, man, still following him, but... Dyer's top tower is no creep under attack. with them. They just, oh, uh, just contend with that turn around kill on the Rubik, and that's what I was talking about. The Dragonite really hard to break down if you're out of burst. No, they're gonna go for it again, but this is not in the general here. Another snowball. The Apathy is here too. From the high ground and man, Death War doing a decent amount of damage, but Kuro is actually all alone here. Sun comes in, that's the call down finally. As Kuro, not quite that just yet. Wind's curse actually committed to bring finally bring him down, but meantime, meantime, Jerbrax might control here, controlling up everyone on the side of Empire. But now Sun still pretty healthy, joining into the fight with the snowball as well from the Tusk. Now they do get the gyrocopter down. Mind control Jerex, they're both very low, and it's a five man wipe. They only lose the winter wyvern here, and. Oh man, that, that escalated quickly. It's all I can say. 2,000, almost 3,000 gold change here. Considering the gain that lost net worth, and that's a terrible place to fight. Even with the call down, it didn't actually hit too many. Even though it looked like kind of an overcommittal on, on the Witch Doctor, just. Uh, dropping the Winter's Curse on him, not really catching anyone. Uh, that secondary snowball and Silent coming back in. Still enough help to actually keep fighting. Turn the fight around for Empire there. Yeah. Now, that's the point, that's the kind of team fight that you need if you just want to forget about the woes of the laning phase, right? We can take a look at the graphs and... Laning phase, exceptionally well for Fimf Jungs. They were up to about a 1500 gold lead, so decent enough, but just that one team fight pushed Empire to that same kind of spot as uh, in terms of gold as well as experience. Now look at Storm Spirit here, see him look for looking start looking for that bloodstone. And he has the energy booster on the courier as well. Actually not too far off. Got the Winter Wyvern having the Tranquil Boots finished, they got the Radiant's Rubik there looking for an under Shadows attack. of the Zone. Silence. Uh... Oh yeah, okay, he dropped the stuff Radiant's too. Bottom tower uh, is uh, under I, was, I was thinking for a second where, where his items went, but he dropped Dyer's them on the ground to reach and faster, so he, he went for the Aquila drums. Pretty standard bolt here, probably looking for the for the Fusal Blade next. And yeah, even a task got his arcane boots, got his level 7, so it's alright. Oh, Kuro tried to ward, but he got caught out. 
Oh well. It's been nice knowing you. But fortunately that was a futile quest in this instant. Top lane though might not be that. Jerax and Matumba man, they're both ready to try and fight. We get some extra help here. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Just waiting for the blink in, but there's more help coming for Empire here. Two teleports come out. There's a snowball here dodging one of the one of the corner stacks and oh, oh, oh. YOLO, their Tusk actually blows up after the line, and now Matumba Man being focused down by General up top here. Fata trying to find a target here, doesn't have his ultimate form, doesn't have too much amount of... Uh, actually, has plenty to play with, but just can't reach anyone, stuns a creep. Now my control in the back here, catches too, but... Going to be enough silence, still up and about the apathy, a little bit of a rough spot, but General still around, gets, <laughs> gets ca bounced by the cask, and takes a lot of damage from Deathward, but ultimately not enough. That should bring him... Critical range and negative three for two trade. Fate comes again with the blink stun. He's all alone though. <laughs> Never mind, Jarex didn't actually see him come back in there. They blow up the storm spirit. That's kind of salvage the fight for them. Of course, the fight recap, not exactly useful there. And, whoa, the fight's not even done yet. They want revenge, they want Vader. Do they have enough damage here? They need to slow him down more, but they can't. Stick jobs come out silent here. Join the pilot, doesn't have another Lance here to throw at. He will do so. Once again, that tanky Dragon Knight. With the uh, with the smoke, nice little play fair from Jarex. Just to make sure that these last couple of illusions aren't enough to bring down this tanky half dragon. This one on Matumba man. I keep committing here. Jarex finds a lower dance. He's all alone. That's a call down. That should be a dead Rubik here. Dead on rock barrage. So. Yeah. Empire looking good in team fights, but the cleanup crew, ball five jumps. They're not entirely ineffective here. 7% increase in win expectancy, yeah. Especially with that kind of fast blink dagger, it's something I considered. But of course it's a very valid option on a Dragon Knight just to have that that instant stun, instant blink stun. Especially if you're talking about Dragon Tail, we we had that uh, we talked about that before. The strongest single target non-ultimate stun there is. Or one of the strongest. I mean, uh, unless you count like the Morphling Adapted Strike. Strength Morphling is like 4.25 seconds or something ridiculous, but it's not quite instant unless you're right next to the target. It's a projectile stun, of course. But yeah, Fimf Youngs, even though they're, they're kind of lo losing in team fights, they're not entirely behind because they are able to get get these pickoffs here, get these, these turnarounds. If you're on the course here, Dragon Knight, of course, at the top. Really, really hard to deal with Vampire right now, actually, but the big problem is we saw it in the last fight. The kiting is just too hard. If he doesn't have his ultimate form, he doesn't have that ranged dragon tail. Then if he doesn't have his blink at the ready, or we use it once. Well, it's a hard time of actually finding someone between the task snowball, between the Phantom Lance, the Doppelganger, as well as the Stones were just slipping on and about. Uh, yeah. Taking a look at the other items on the side of Pimp Jungs, we've got the Lion working on the Tagger, so heading straight for that. Stopping for anything else along the way. That'll now that'll put a lot of a uh, lot of what's the word? Uh, that'll mean that Kuro will have to buy a lot of rewards. So the Agnum Scepter for the Witch Doctor is not really on the table anytime soon. But yeah, the biggest story is the Strider Cop. What, what's he going for? He has the face boots, so very effective item. You're looking for max uh, max damage from the fire cannon. A little bit better than the power dress than that. Uh, that we got. Of course, Power Tets just being able to try to switch is a little bit more effective if you are spamming your spells. Uh, just just being able to run down heroes like Sororis with the Wyvern and Rubik. Very nice little addition and then kind of standard build Radiant's helping to dominate it. A little bit of lifesteal. A bit of ancient stacking for themselves. They have the creep here. I'm not sure if he has a creep. If you have to tell him, you should definitely use it for something. Either just getting a wolf to bolster your damage, or get a creep to, to stack ancients with. Still have a triple stack though. Mind control just finishing Radiant's that up there. So they have that economy to work with. 
Elbot coming in here onto the main field. There wants to fight him. And Tumblemen caught out. Snowball, there's the Winter's Curse as well. He'll be blown up immediately. Jax got that as well. Fata coming in from the side. And uh, Glimmercade not enough to save the task. Jarex also very low, not low enough, but <laughs> low enough. Force Splinter Blast to pick him off. Silent though. Caught in the midst of that. Now Fata. <laughs> he, he's just too he's just too strong. He's too tanky. Low and ants. He stole the death ward here. Was in no position to get get a good channel off and there. Four for two trade here. Stormsford, the only one to survive. Man, the fight recap shows. Yeah, that's a big, big win for Fünf Jungs. Uh, we'll butt some time here. 80 minutes. It's had a good game and oh, actually up to 10 charges already as well. So it's kind of the the one calming factor if you're Empire after the team fight right now. It's it's like okay, Silent, he, he still has some good farms. He has his Defusal Blade finish, so he didn't actually lose all that much gold in that fight. Still have a Storm Spirit who has a good Bloodstone timing, who already filled it up with two extra charges, so... They're still in control of this game, say, even though the gold and experience graphs back to zero, just have to be, be careful about their engagements. They cannot ignore this Dragonite. Because if Fata comes in with his Dragon form, he'll be able to throw a Dragon Tail after Dragon Tail is now up to level 4. They have that 3.25 seconds on a 9 second cooldown. That is very little downtime if you think about it. And sitting at 4,600 gold as well. wonder what it'll go for. Maybe just straight AC or straight up BKB? You can buy it right now if he wants to. Find out soon. I oh, it's a Sanj. Okay. Looking for a Halberd? Halber would, would be silly though. I mean, Phantom Lance is just going to be able to double ganger that off. So, more likely either Sanj and Yasha, but then he would have bought that straight up as well. Or. Maybe maybe if you go for the Halber, it's more for the evasion. For the evasion and the stats and for the disarm. Or maybe you want to just have the disarm and the tusk or the stones with it instead. Might as well be a Sanjin Yasha, or maybe a Silver Edge if he wants to go back for that. A little bit of extra damage, have... Just have the ability to disable these passives here, like uh, Phantom Lens, Phantom Rush, and should also disable Juxtapose. Just take in, and the Snow Sword Overload is also actually a big part of a General's damage here. So if you're able to disable that with a Silver Edge, go for it. Dyer's top tower is All right, more items top. inside from Vyong. So we've got the Glimmer Cape on the Witch Doctor here, Kuro. Been able to pick that up after the last fight. We do have the Blink Online, of course, completed. And Clockwork actually going Dyer's for a solo crest, so... Is under attack. Uh, more support-oriented here. Also, we see Clockwork just go for the Blade Man into Axe or something like that. Be all that selfish. But in this attack. game, they have the Dragonite to be the frontline tanker, so Clockwork doesn't really need to be that. Of course, he tanks up himself a little bit with the Soul Crest, but primarily you pick that up. Just make sure that either the Dragon Knights or maybe the Gyrocopter Fees and Dyer's a little bit of a rough spot. Is it's just even harder to deal with. Harder to bring down. And... So, if you consider the uh, Team Empire's lineup, none of these heroes really wants to build, uh, build an MKB. Silent could, but Phantom Lens is really looking for all the kinds of items. Uh, Bolster up the Illusions a little bit more because of uh, that the plus damage from the MKB is not going to translate to the illusion, so we'd rather have stats, we'd rather have a Scotty, a Butterfly, a Heart, these kind of things. Okay. Lane might be next point of contention. Tier 1 in mid as well as bottom, still up for the dire side, so go left. On the table here that Empire would really like get their own item progression a little bit bolstered here of course <clears throat> of course the course look good here oh general gets caught out here and now follow up hookshot he actually has to zip out a long long way he's able to do that all the way across the river now oh, that almost was very bad if they had any sort of extra extra lockdown coming like the line with the blink been a dead storm at the very least, though they pull them back a little bit. But of course, with 10 bloodstone charges, he'll be back in a fight ASAP. And, uh, actually, goes in on the curve. That might have been a mistake here. There's the hacks, there's the follow up, stun, finger of death, and the death ward here. 
Mistakes were made. That's what he's saying to himself right now. Did not account for Jerax down on the side. That is a dangerous mistake to make. Me, oh wow, me on the bottom. I missed that here. I get a pick up on Silence between two men and Feta. Looks down into a lot of burst damage, it looks like. Silence is not a, at a point where you can really survive that, of course. Does have the the fusel blade not really giving you too much survivability against magic burst. I mean, he has a lot of armor uh, between the extra stats and of course the ring of Aquila. But the Alas here is really relies on being able to doppelganger in and out of the fights. Now, Roshan, excellent stable, of course that's another effect of the solo crash, just being able to Bring them down relatively quickly and easily. Empire of the Day don't know, or they are not comfortable fighting this. Of course, without a Phantom Lancer, you don't really want to. Kind of rely, uh, unless you, unless you're counting on a really big Winter Warren Ultimate. That's always the kind of spell that can turn any sort of team fight at almost any point in the game. Get a Winter's Curse on, let's say, Dragonite with everyone bashing away at him, then. That might be enough to help you bring him down. Or even like Jarkov, he's much more squishy. Um, actually, not much more. As still has good amount of armor here, especially with that ice armor from uh, from the Ogre Frost Mage that he's picked himself up, and that's a decent help pool as well. And of course, he has the ages now, so it's actually really hard for Empire to engage into this if they're grouping up like that. That's all we see. General up top, he's still pushing in. Waiting for a reaction. It's gonna be an even trade as they lose the tier 2 mid and even a little bit of damage on the tier 3. Top lane. Oh, they actually get the Tusk here in the Cox. Mind control. Does he have a Ace Yes, he does. Do it with flare. They catch him and I also suspect the Stone Sword is there. Jerks, the smoke will be broken. Kind of minefield between remnants here. Don't exactly want to blink into a deck of like two or three remnants up there. And if worse comes to worse, what's what's the stop zone spirit from just slipping out again? Try still trying to scout him out, trying to find out if he's still there. Yeah, really nice as well. Just sending him to courier on cleanup duty. A lot of teams just leave their leave the trash on the road pit. It's a health violation. And all that. Okay, hello, that. Blink stun into finger of death, and now uh, general comes in to try and get the counter kill, and they will take out Jarax. Silent here, caught the call down, and did the finger of the stolen? Yes, it was. Did the laugh tap back, going the way of uh, man, but not enough to actually continue the chase as they don't. Did not wish to continue to chase through that call down, of course. That's a little pick off here. Wasted ultimate on the Rubik, and he's holding on to that, so he'll have that one or two more times, I think. Actually, what's the, what's the duration? I have 240, so he, he can use that a couple more times. So he decides to get another spell. It's great on Rubik, especially if he gets himself up to the Blink Dagger, which I assume he's, he's saving up for now as well. Link Telekinesis is instant and initiation as yeah, Link Hex is from the line. Of course not as long, but still it's it's enough for you to get the Finger of Death off, to get the Fate Bolt off, steal another spell, and then keep going, right? Potentially very dangerous spell to give over. The only problem is that it's, it actually costs a lot of mana, and Lion of course can account for that with the mana drain. But Rubik, not so much. Like half his mana pool if you want so. Gotta keep that in mind too. Walking that down for a stone spin. Back up to seven charges here. He died twice in this game. I think once once he went at the bloodstone. Radiance top tower is under attack. We'll be have to be looking for more pickups here to fuel that item as well. Well we really want to go on the gyrocopter though, because I mean, from the rest of the team, you scout out that something's happening down here in the bottom. Teleport out of tough slow, it doesn't have a teleport. Only shielded by the fact that the Fumfumster will probably assume that he does and teleport it out if they, they actually spotted him out with the rock in the first place. Right? It'll, yeah, let's actually take a look at GPM. 
Let's see. Never remember how to argue for that, but yeah. Gold minute 510 on both Silent as Radio well as Fata. Tower is under attack. Gyrocopter at about 500 as well. No. Yeah, this is item progression on track. He has the Sun Shinyasha, so that's an indication of them being able to. Uh, of, of them wanting to finish the game earlier rather than later. I mean, playing up against Phantom Lancer, you have, have, you have heroes fallen. like Dragonite on your team. Always the kind of game plan that you want to go. It's also weird, he has his items, but I, f I feel like he Radiant's he hasn't had as much of an impact as he would have attack. loved to. Just because the kind of initiation on five Phantom was just there a little bit too often. Back of Fata and back of... Uh, Back of Jerox here. Lion most on anything. Now oh, yeah, you see you see it in the movement here from Fim Jungs. They're just walking across the map on the radiant side looking for targets. Looking for someone to pick off to turn it into a push. So far, Empire pretty good at dodging them. Look at the vision that allows them to do Oh god, actually no. no. Glimmer cable actually keep him safe. I was expecting a fight to break out. But yeah, if you look at the vision here, this wall of course will be countered now, it's also was a relatively fresh ward, so that kind of stacks. But also this observer ward down here in the bottom, valuable to just spot out these kind of aggressive rotations. The problem is for Empire with that kind of playstyle, they kind of have to be held together like this and just move as five and just farm up the jungle as five. Can't get you anywhere, and instead the smoke up is five. They get to up on the Tumum, and Jarvis comes in as well, trying to help, but he's not really helping anyone right now, except Team Empire. And now it's their turn to turn a pick off into a push. That's gonna be that you want finally. Rest of them Jungs, they getting themselves into position to stop the push when it goes further, but they can't really fight here. Not with two heroes down. Dyer's middle tower. Oh, two of the big damage dealers down as well. I mean, damage dealers and controllers. Dyer's middle the line, of course, attack. Blink stun. Blink AV stun potentially. Oh, Blink. There's the lift onto Fata. He's kind of isolated here. And Silent rocking away at his mana. Punch up into the ace. Still quite tanky, but not tanky enough up against Dyer's five heroes and fortified. equally as many illusions. So they're Dyer's going to get a tier two off of that. And yeah, there's no buyback on the Dragonite. They can actually go high ground right now. Silent, he has a, he has a heart actually. <laughs> He's been farming extremely well. I looked at it for a couple of minutes and what he put his effort into, and that'll allow them to siege very effectively here. Especially since they by now should figure out that it's probably no buyback to Dragonite. They're gonna go in. They're gonna get more. Kuro punched up into the air as well. General here just zipping in to uh, to scare them off essentially with Tumba Man back and Jesus base being put in shambles. Middle barracks are under a whole lot that you can do because the jump potential uh, for Team Empire is much Dyer's superior here. If you don't, if you have the madness advantage, you once again blink, lift, follow up from the snowball, from uh, <coughs> from general zipping in, and Paulo's not gonna do anything. They can pick off after pick off. Relatively deep behind Dyer's the lines here. Netted them like four, five kills in total. Well, as a, two towers, three towers, and a set of racks. It started in the tier one, if you remember. That one single push. And that's the kind of empire that we all know and love. I mean, just just being able to fight and then take a fight Dyer's so convincingly that you take extra objectives off of that. And another right, last hit on the tower, silent, another 350 gold or something. He, he must have just finished up his heart. He's now sitting at 4.5k, but now. Now the pickup down here in the bottom. They find Lion. I'm not quite sure what Jerry's was doing there, but well, by Jungs, very rough spot right now. Look at the gold graph, man. That, once again, just like the like in the laney phase, Dyer's bottom picture tower continues, but the stakes are much higher. Five Jungs will uh, still advance here, about 4,000 gold going the way, and then just one team fight, and like. Three, Dyer's four towers and five tower heroes, five, attack. six heroes being picked off. 12,000 gold chain, 14,000 more or less. Now up to 10,000 advantage for Team Empire. What kind of story for the experience? Sitting at about 7,500 advantage now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just finished the hard and now. Looking for a butterfly and he's 
is almost going to get that. I mean, that timing on this Phantom Lancer, seeing a 20k gold 35 minutes in, I mean, that's, that's something they would expect at 45 minutes. 40, 45 minutes here, but there's been no pressure, or l very little pressure onto Silent. I mean, he's been picked up three times, but then he's, he's been left alone. Right? And, and from Fyongs, they, they've been able to take map control, but since Empire was able to dodge their, their gank attempts, attempts to convert that map control into pickoffs, into high ground pushes, Empire being able to dodge that, and they found the space. Not just Dyer's for their PL, but also for the Stones to keep farming to their crucial items fortified. up, and then all it takes is one fight. If you're pretty much even, all it takes is one fight. Man advantage to push you over the edge and Dyer's take objectives, and they're not stopping here. If you ahead, get further ahead, and they get all the items that they want. Now, even on supports for your Rubik, with the 4 star finished up, the Apathy, and the Blink Dagger of his own. Thoughts about what was he had 13 bloodstone charges, so it was at seven before all that stuff happened and now looking for Will Lincoln Sphere here. Hate that actually just up against the finger of or any sort of uh, single target is able like like the Dragon Tail even or the hex. Thing of the sword. Just being able to block that with Lincoln's would be very, very useful in Roshan, next target here for Empire. Youngs, they know this is happening here. They had to creep in there. Of course, they also have the rocket players to keep tabs, but can they actually fight this? I think they can, but it would be very, very chancy, and really comes down to positioning here. If they get a good uh, hog shot in here, maybe slay a fight like that. The apathy, very wise decision to stay out. Ada will actually spot them here. You just have to make sure not to punch up for what's good. Oh, okay, there it is. General come, general in here, locked down with these, uh, with the hacks. Hawks come down, Fate are in the middle of the fight. And a lower dance and backside isolated. Uh, Silent here looking for targets. Actually, can't really find the one that he wants here. Everyone's still alive though, I'm not sure how. Fate final finding the Swordsword here in the back, so he's down for the count. He can't fight back, back in 20 seconds. The Tomb Man on top, can't allow him mana and health though. Same for everyone on side of Fünf Jungs, so that's all they have, all the juice that they have left, and... Empire? They're still up and running! Mega kill for Silent is... Um... Couldn't really lock onto a target for, for the longest part of this fight, but he's able to stay alive because of the heart, because of the butterfly, eh? Fünf Jungs? They committed so much on the Storm Spirit, and they, I can't, you can't really fault them, right? It's... I can't really fault him because Storm Spirit is really, really hard to deal with. Because you need that burst, or else he's just gonna do so much AoE damage in that kind of constricted space. Kinda have to bring him down quickly, but then they expanded all of their arsenal on him, and there was nothing left um, for Silent because it took them so long as well. In general, started here, he was hexed up, and then he zipped over here. Tiger and Fata finally tracked him down on Silent doing all that. Yeah, able Dyer's to work. Bottom tower is under attack. Same for the apathy, of course. Great curse. Midst of that as well, it's kind of interrupted Jungs. Their attempt to take the fight, and yeah, the result of that is. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, free ages for Stormsword, free set of racks, and getting close and closer to game. Dyer's bottom barracks. For Jungs, they need attack. nothing short of miracle right now if they want to turn this around and general. Impressive here on the Jarvis and back. Nice winter scars on free. Silent comes in here, locking, uh, locking onto. Uh, who's that? That's the Fainter. Bringing that out of man, out of life points here. As Colin comes out of the Tumblem and trying to do what he can. Meanwhile, back back control. Dropping down the cards here. Just desperately trying to find something. By the Fainter here, that might turn it around. So Silent, he doesn't give it that. Just locks out Kuroki. Therefore, not doing nearly as much as they need to. And Aisha is even blocking him in a little bit here. The old warrior with the punch up at the end. They get another kill. Fainter dragged out of his own fountain here now. Stunned up. Locked down. Glimmer Cave is not going to save you there. They, they dive the fountain. They get Kuro. And that's the GG here. Triple kill for both Silent and General. And yeah, Empire showing us that they've not let up after TI. They're still as strong as. Just as strong as we know them, essentially. Very good game from them and five Jungs, five Jungs.
uh, not looking too bad to be honest. I mean, they had good lane stage, they had a decent mid game, but they just weren't able to weren't able to recapitalize. Really